Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining me. This is uh, a big one. It's the DAX Open, the US Open. Uh, the DAX Open with myself, Russell Shaw, Senior Market Specialist at FXM. My email address, rshaw at fxm.com, and uh, today is Thursday. It's the 24th of Feb 2022. I'll just bring up the high risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. And um, here is our market commentaries disclaimer. And uh, here's our references, uh, Marcus Scope 2.0. I'm just going to bring up our, our chart. All right, so this is the, the weekly. Let's just go through the, uh, the CNBC um, news because I think really it's important. Uh, Euro mar European markets are set to plunge after Russia launches attack on Ukraine. Hey Pete, yeah, nice to have you on the on the webinar as always. Um, all right, so let's uh, go through this uh, this morning um, this morning note. Uh, European stocks are expected to open sharply lower on Thursday after reports that Russia has begun an attack on Ukraine, tipping a long-standing diplomatic crisis into a military conflict. Global markets are likely to be thoroughly shaken on Thursday on the news that Russia has launched an attack on Ukraine, and one that appears to be more widespread than, expect, uh, than expected. Multiple ex explosions across Ukraine were reported by journalists and government officials in at least four cities early Thursday morning local time, undermining Russian President Vladimir Putin's claim that Russia was launching a military operation that would be limited to the far east of the country. Starting about two hours before dawn on Thursday, explosions were felt in and around the cities of Kiev, Odessa, Kharkiv, and Mariupol. Uh, the explosions are ongoing, according to reports. Uh, Dmitry Kileba, Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs, said in a statement that a full-scale invasion of his country was underway. U.S. President Joe Biden condemned the attack. The world will hold Russia accountable, he said in a statement before he held a late-night call with Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky. The European Union is set to hold an emergency meeting on Thursday to discuss its response to the latest development. All right. Um, fair amount of earnings out today. Access. Uh, Safran, St. Uh, Joban, Mercedes, Benz, Deutsche Telekom, Anglo-American, Rolls-Royce, Lloyds, etc. On the data front, French consumer confidence figures for February are due. Uh, hey, Howard. Good morning to you. All right, so the... Um, the weekly technical trend, I guess, has um, been strengthened. This is where we put the, the lower trough yesterday. Uh, the lower trough has now uh, been pushed um, down here. Um, what I want to do is uh, let's put on a, uh, an RSI here. All right, so uh, we're heading towards um, over oversold, but we're not quite there yet. So certainly scope for more downside movement on a technical basis. I mean, we this is obviously um, a uh, an ex extreme event. So we we could hit oversold and, and stay oversold for a lengthy period. Um, but we've got the lower peak uh, followed by the lower trough, and. Um, the uh, I think the the military action here is um, to me uh, uh, just so brutally surprising that um, um, there's a uh, clearly a uh, um, if we go down to the daily chart yeah clearly a, just a, a huge um, movement down um, what we can see here is 
a uh, expansion in the Bollinger Bands. Okay, so the Bollinger Bands have shown a um, an expansion in in validity. Now, the question still remains from yesterday: um, Is this an overshoot? Is this a uh, a reaction, um, a sort of a knee jerk reaction to uh, the clear uh, military escalation? You know, to all out conflict. Um, and is there um, a, a dip, you know, a potential dip here? I think we just got to keep that in the back of, back of our mind. Uh, at the moment, it seems that the, um, clearly the downtrend is the, the path of least resistance given the, um, the geopolitical crisis. And um, the question is, um, are we able to take advantage um, of the downside in terms of being short, which is um, a pretty, I guess, heartless way of looking at it. But um, as traders, you know, um, is there an opportunity here? And um, we'll go down to the to the hourly chart, and the hourly chart here does seem to be um, oversold. So let's just take a look at um, the market rhythm. Okay, so let's take this out. And let's take this out. And let's take that out. Okay. So the 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 obvious clue yesterday that the um, that the overshoot scenario wasn't taking place was as soon as we uh, fell out of the 80, which is what we mentioned yesterday. So um, I think the emphasis uh, was on this hourly chart. Does the stochastic stay above 80 or does it drop out of the 80? It dropped out of the 80. So the, the overshoot scenario wasn't on, on the table. Um, so we then we start seeing a, um, a drop in the in the price. And we have to put in our market rhythm, it looks like this, one, two, two, three, okay, and two, all right. Now we're looking for the two, three, all right. So um, I think there is a distinct possibility that, that things get worse before they get better. And um, so any sort of, um, any sort of, Rally off of S3, I think, needs to be looked at with um, suspicion. Okay, so we look at this with suspicion. And um, to go short now is, um, we, you've got to understand, you're getting in fairly late in the, in the movement. Um, uh, the signals we're giving here, uh, signal one, okay, signal two. Now, once those were given, um, well, then the plunge of the stochastic into our uh, lower quintile, that, that's what's driven the, um, uh, the price down. What I mean by that, it's a representation of market underlying momentum. So it's the momentum. There's, there's been a strong momentum driving uh, price down. Um, but the safety of the RSI now has been um, has been activated right so so we are in a uh, an oversold condition on the on the hourly chart so perhaps some sort of normalization here is something to keep an eye on out for and then if there is some sort of normalization the idea would be to look for any um, rally okay so um, in this case, the obvious key level is S2. So S2, S1, I think, is, a, is an area that we can focus on and then see if that gets targeted for the next part of the rhythm. So one, two, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, two. And um, we'll see um, if the market rhythm uh, sort of dictates the um, unfolding of these uh, geopolitical events. But it's quite clear, I think, that um, to uh, be looking at a um, at an overshoot now, something 
which I still think it, we should keep in the back of our mind. Um, however, you can't go long. Um, well, you can go long. <laughs> I can't give advice, but it's inadv inadvisable to go long when the momentum is is is, is to the shorter. At the same time, it's inadvisable to go short when the momentum is to the long side, right? You want to you want to see the um, you want to kind of um, go with the momentum. So here, the momentum's clearly down. So if the momentum's clearly down, it's uh, it's worth um, taking a look at the um, the S2 um, S1 level to see if that perhaps gives the opportunity to catch the next impulse. Uh, Pete's just writing here that it failed to break uh, the 138, which he did note as um, resistance. So this was uh, the resistance that uh, um, sort of this level here, Pete. So, so, so Pete just kind of noted that look, we're at this 148. Uh, just be careful, that's resistance, and um, the resistance held. Okay. So. Um, I think the idea here is, well, just be cautious with your timing of the short. Now, we're very oversold. Uh, clearly, the events here are um, extreme in terms of, let's just uh, keep it to um, to the discussion, to, um, to, to uh, technicals. So it's extreme in terms of emotion. So if it's extreme in terms of emotion, um, of course, uh, you can get a uh, a lengthy um, RSI in abnormal territory. However, it's not a comfortable place for me to be looking to um, to short. I would need some sort of normalization here, some sort of resistance, and then see if um, that um, provides um, uh, an opportunity to exploit uh, the markets. At the same time that we have the um, the DAX uh, shooting down, and, and I think it's worth probably seeing how this market opens, which will be in the next sort of minute or so. Um, the obvious other instrument to keep an eye on would be gold, right? Because gold is the safe haven, so let's just bring up gold. And you can just see that gold has just powered on ahead. But this is a, it's almost a mirror image of DAX. In other words, um, the signal here was given here and here. Okay, so the signal has been given a fair amount of time back, and what, what, when we're sitting overboard. Okay, so gold, I think, is another instrument to certainly keep on the the, the watch list. And just like the um, the S1, S2 level is probably the levels to watch for possible resistance on the DAX. Well, the R1, R2 would be the logical um, support levels to see if we can catch some sort of uh, pullback here in terms of um, getting in on a better risk adjusted uh, basis. Um, the markets, I think, are extremely emotive at the moment. And because they're extremely emotive at the moment, we have um, two, we have to have stop losses and risk management. Okay, so let's just see how the market opens here. Okay, it's just it's just opened. Um, so just remember that we're over we're over sold here on the DAX. Okay, um, let's just see what happens. Uh, Gurdip's just asking about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we can take a look at that at the moment. I, I would imagine before we even look at Bitcoin, I, I'm going to. Um, Imagine that it's down, <laughs> so, and the reason that I think it's down is because I think the dollar would probably be up here. Um, let me see if that assessment is right. Um, okay, so that was kind of just uh, sort of a gut feel. Yeah, so you can see uh, Bitcoin's down as well. So um, if we have to take a look at Bitcoin, um, it's just uh, you know it's in a terrible. Uh, but I. Um, uh, Gurdip, we did a pretty good um, crypto minute yesterday, uh, talking about if if Bitcoin is a um, sorry, let me just change this. If Bitcoin is a safe haven, so that's on the that's on the Insights webpage. It's also um, I believe I put it on the Telegram channel. Um, 
let's just change this. Uh, sorry, let me just link this up here. Yeah, okay. So Bitcoin, um, we've got this death cross here. Okay. Um, I think that, uh, I think what's a possibility here, something that is worth keen an eye on is, um, and this is again a speculative, but at the moment it looks like there's a possibility of a double top here. Okay. Um, of course, you don't know, you don't have the pattern until the pattern completes, right? So the, um, so the idea here is, how do we measure the target for Bitcoin and um, just take it, uh, in, take it from there and um, you can measure it down from the breakdown over here. And um, then we get a target of, um, you know, 12,000. So, so let me just say, um, a few things about what I've just done here. I've just done a, what's called a measured move, and, and I've made a couple of assumptions, which are clearly um, assumptions. It doesn't mean this is the way things are going to go. Um, the first assumption is that you can do a measured move with a technical pattern. Well, the truth is tech, uh, measured moves are academic. Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. In my mind, um, they're more harmful than anything because I don't think that there is any uh, rational explanation for them, except some sort of um, sort of um, uh, geometric uh, symmetry, which in a, in, a, in of itself some sounds like hocus pocus to me. But um, so that's the first uh, the first thing is is there such a thing as a measured move? And the truth is, yes, sometimes there is. No, sometimes there's not. Okay, but. Um, the measured move it does give us uh, twelve thousand. Now the other, the, the, there's another two things to to mention here. Um, the measured move that I've based this on, uh, Gertie, is on the logarithmic scale. So you can see, which is, in my opinion, the correct way to do it because we look at a longer term chart. Chart, but a logarithmic scale is very different to a, an arithmetic scale. So if I change it here. Yeah, um, it kind of looks very, very different. Um, the arithmetic scale will give us a, a, a situation that's far more dire. Let me show you what the, the arithmetic scale would give us something much, much lower. So then, then we, yeah, we've looked, we've gone in negative. So, so clearly you can't go into negative. So the, uh, um, we'll, we'll just keep it as the logarithmic scale, okay? Um, and there in of itself is, problem, uh, is problematic. Well, why would one use logarithmic as opposed to arithmetic? Why would one use arithmetic as opposed to logarithmic? Um, to me, in my mind, uh, the measured move is problematic, but if you're going to use it, you should do it on a logarithmic scale. And then the, the final point is we've mentioned before, is this, is this a double top? Well, it might not be. What happens if it's a triple top? Okay. So what happens if it supports it and does that? So we don't have a pattern until it completes. So there's a lot of um, assumptions going in. What I can say for certain though, is that we do have a sort of a death cross in the triple moving average system. Um, the red here, the, this red um, is a 34 simple, I believe. Yeah, it's a 34 simple. Um, if, if the direction of this 34 simple starts moving down, I think that's the next bearish development there. So just keep that in mind. Um, we might as well take a look at US dollar because Bitcoin over US dollar, uh, well, if, the, if Bitcoin is uh, getting put down, um, it's quite likely it's because of uh, money moving into US dollar, which is, which is a bona fide safe haven. Um, and we've, we've kind of been asking, is this the next higher trough? Well, here is the, here is the golden cross, right? Here's the golden cross. So the golden cross shows the um, the settings for the moving average. So these are simples. Um, I use a five for the green, a 13 for the um, orange, and a 34. Now that question is from Anna, but I just want to be very clear. There's nothing magical about those 
uh, settings. And the reason that I've used them is because they're Fibonacci and, you know, Fibonacci seems to gather interest. So I've used a 513, 34. I, I put this off of a, um, off of a, a phenomenal um, analyst in Australia um, who's no longer with us by the name of uh, Dawn Bolton Smith. Dawn used a 510.15, I believe. I think that's what she used to, to her credit. Very, very, very um, well-respected um, analyst in eyes. Um, so I'm just using a 513.34. But um, the, the idea here is uh, not really the settings. Forget about settings. It's the positioning of the uh, orange, orange is 13. Orange, orange 13. Okay, so 5, 13, 34. Um, the, the, the settings in of themselves are not the big deal. The big deal is, is the positioning to one another. And um, here you can see that they are starting to show an angle and separation. Okay, so you've got green now on top of orange, orange now on top of red. And if the, these guys over here, if, because I don't know, but if they develop more angle and separation, well, that's now developing momentum. Similarly, you go back to Bitcoin. Well, they, Bitcoin's already in bear trend, but the direction of red is neutral. It's flat. Okay, so you need the, this. So the, there's two things we're looking for. Yeah, we're looking for angle, angle, which we don't have angle. We've got angle for, of two of the three and separation. So we've got separation. But we don't have angle. You need angle and separation. You see on the way up, angle and separation. Yeah, you need angle and separation on the on the way down. We don't have angle here. If we go through to gold. Okay, look what we've got here. Angle and separation. Can you see how the reds turned up on gold? See that angle and separation. Now let's let's take a look at this in terms of DAX. Okay. Well, this is actually um, angle and separation to the downside, so it's 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 bearish, and we're looking at a weekly time frame. So, um, you know, the um, the omens, so to speak, um, are not good. Um, there is no predictive power in uh, in. I've got to be very careful how I say this. I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to put my head on a chopping block here. I'm going to say there's no predictive power in technical analysis. Okay. Um, gee, I think that uh, a lot of technical guys will slaughter me if they heard me say that. Um, I would say that there is um, a momentum effect which uh, which lines up with um, which lines up with um, with I guess um, Newtonian laws. Uh, you know, uh, an object that is, I can't remember the exact word in, an object in motion continues in motion until met with an equal and opposite force, right? That's a Newtonian physic, law of physics. That, I think, holds power in, in the market. Prices will continue in motion until they, uh, so if you, if they clearly hear DAX, the, the motion, the uh, motion's downward. So that would continue until it gets um, met by an equal and opposite buying force, they, then we get that support coming in. So I think that's where the, uh, that's what we can see with momentum indicators is this, this kind of Newtonian um, effect taking place. So as, as long as we've got the angle and separation, prices will be under pressure. But I can't say for how long, okay, there could be um, a, a time when the portfolio managed to say, look, this is actually a pretty decent price for us to get long. Despite the geopolitical conflicts, these companies still have value. Okay, Their value hasn't evaporated just because of the escalation in the geopolitics, as, as, as terrible as it is. So at some stage, support's going to come in. At some stage, support's going to come in. I just don't know where. So the idea here is keep think of it in terms of that Newtonian uh, uh, Gurdip's, uh, <laughs> Gurdip writes, New Newton's first law states that a body is at rest or moving at a constant speed in a straight line. It will remain at rest or keep moving at a straight line at a constant speed until, unless it is acted on by force. And what is that? That's called inertia, right? There's, a, there's an inertia effect. So, so the inertia is that there's a resistance to change. Okay, so the fact that we're moving down means that there's going to be a resistance to change. In other words, there's, there's a resistance 
to the to the movement down right Gertie? if something's if something is at if something is at um if something is uh, moving sideways call, call it at rest because the, you can't truly be at rest in the markets but sideways is kind of at rest well the overpowering force of the geopolitics has pushed it out of that out of that um, sense of rest and now it's in motion and it's going to continue in motion until there's another force that meets it head on and overpowers it so as Gertie Bryce acted upon by a force so that's where I think the the technicals sort of shine uh, not in their predictive capabilities I, I, I'm firmly opposed to any sort of prediction or, or forecast it's just not possible but certainly uh, there is um, fundamentals that are in flux here and that's what's been reflected by the um, by the momentum uh, indicators. Now, if we just go down to the hourly, take a look what's happening here. Okay, we said that we're oversold. Okay, we said that we were oversold, and you can see that um, there does seem to be some sort of support coming in at that S3. Okay, now the fact of the matter is um, the geopolitics are still in play here, very much so. Um, the fact of the matter is um, this S2, S1 level now becomes key levels for us to watch. Okay, so uh, does pr price have the, um, the strength to move above it? Well, that would be something, wouldn't it? But it, it, this may be the area that the shorts may target again next. Okay, so we just want to be uh, cognizant that this uh, support level S3 is correcting an oversold uh, condition but that's dangerous okay because the oversold question is effectively a condition that brings in support which we found at s3 now that it's normalizing well the, the shorts may have another go at this because um you know that they'll exploit the um the fundamentals the geopolitics to their advantage all right um any questions? Um, have I missed anything? Uh, Howard saying that 20,000 is being um, suggested by uh, Bitcoin. Again, you know, um, taking a look at Bitcoin, the I think what what would happen here is uh, a couple of things, uh, not a couple, a few things. Um, the direction of the red EMA needs, uh, sorry, the red SMA needs to be monitored. The completion of the double top pattern needs to be um, monitored and then uh, to be quite honest it may hit 20 Howard it may hit 15 it may hit 24 you know nobody knows you ever saying 20 well they've just kind of thumbs up that there's no way they can know that with any form of certainty um, if I was a if I was a uh, sort of a true technical analyst, I would say our next level, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, 12,900, you know, I mean, it may hit that. And then I'll pat myself on the back. If it doesn't hit that, I'll say, well, it's theoretically nature, nobody knows. You know, all, all, all we know is that there's been a, a, a death cross, so to speak. And if there's angle that develops, because we've got the separation, if there's angle that develops, well, then there's downwards momentum. Then just as Gurdip says, well, then we've got Newtonian uh, forces at work. Is there going to be some sort of um, is there going to be some sort of force that is going to act upon it? And that's the big question. Um, the rebound on the DAX is that a dead cat bounce? Um, so I would I would think that um, it's it's suspicious. I, don't, I think that the, the, we're in a downtrend. Uh, we're in a downtrend. Um, I think that this is a suspicious, um, a suspicious. Um, in fact, something's just popped up here on my system. Air raid sirens are heard in Kiev. Okay, so this sounds awful. Um, uh, Anna's is just asking which uh, pivot points. Uh, I just use the classic. I just use the classic. Um, let me just open. I just use the classic. It's the ones that I think that most people follow, so you may as well use the classic. Um, 
The Bitcoin believers will hold and will be will be prepared to go into Bitcoin winter for years. That may be the case. I mean, it may be the case. Uh, I'm not sure it's the wisest strategy, um, but it may be the case. Um, does the death cross need to be any emails? No. Um, so death cross, golden cross, again, it's just in, in my view, it's just sort of uh, lingo, uh, jargon. Um, mo I think most analysts would regard a 5200 as a death cross, golden cross, but I can't, I can't say that for sure. Um, so generally, um, just um, again, the, 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 these death cross, golden cross, they sound so cool. I think maybe just call it a bull cross or a bear cross <laughs> to avoid <laughs> to avoid anything. Uh, Classic's not an option in trading view. Um, and it just send me an email. I'll see what the uh, I'll see what we can. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look there. I'll take a look there. Yeah. Um, okay, just one other comment here, which Howard um, has a, a really cool comment. Um, so he says here, uh, what normally happens when markets go down, uh, smart, buy, smart traders buy, others follow for fear of missing out, then the smart traders sell and take profit. Um, that in itself is a... Um, it's a huge statement, um, and, and I think a very good statement. The what, what you are uh, re referring to here is um, a, effectively a stock market cycle, um, and Dow theory does have something to say about that. And, and, and I think that this is a really important part of technical analysis. I think this over here you will see um, is valid time and time again. Um, it kind of looks like this. Um, so I hope I'm um, kind of like that. So what have I done? Yeah, there's three stages up. There's generally three stages down according to Dow theory. Um, Dow was referring to the to the stock market, but I my opinion is that uh, it's a, a psychological cycle, which probably can be applied to. I would imagine any instrument, but you've got something here called the renewed confidence stage. Uh, you've got something here called the improved earning stage. Uh, then over here, you've got something called the rampant speculation stage. Okay speculation and, and and these tend to be co consistent throughout uh, market um, sort of bubbles and then you've got something here called the um, loss of confidence stage loss of con confidence confidence loss of confidence stage then here you're going to have uh, worse earnings okay. And then this one over here is uh, panic selling. And then once panic selling, uh, once panic selling finishes, uh, renewed confidence starts, and we start the cycle over again. Um, usually at the end of panic selling, there's been so much, so much uh, blood spilt on the market floor. You know, nobody wants anything to do with the markets. Well, that's exactly when the pros are hunting because then there's bargains. And then there's bargains. So, you know, just going back to to that, um, a Bitcoin holders holding until um, you know until the winter ends. Well, that might be the case until this panic selling age. You know, if if this if this uh, if the cycle holds. So, uh, and it's usually here the the amateurs usually panic sell, and it's usually the pros that are collecting here, and then they that collecting. Um, moves us into renewed confidence anyway so there's a bit of the theory and um, this is uh, this is a um, hugely this is hugely important this is hugely important uh, this is in, in terms of um, bottom uh, sorry up down analysis this is probably the very first thing that you would um, look at uh, 
people did buy cheap in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's a uh, buy value, you know, uh, and then you, you sell expensive. Buy value, sell when it's expensive. All right. Um, did I get everything? There, there was a few. Did I miss any questions? Have, have I got everything? Just let me let me know. All right. Um, we will have, of course, the US Open this afternoon. It's going to be absolutely fascinating just to see how the, the market, the cash markets open in the US. And um, I'll speak to you guys um, later in the day. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, much appreciated.